All right, today's video, we're going to be showing you how to swap out your coolant temp sensor. Uh, first step, you want to make sure your coolant is drained. Obviously, your engine is cool by the time you do that. But if your coolant's not draining, take this off. You're going to have a mess on your hands. A bunch of coolant's going to start leaking out. Now, the first thing you want to do is pull off the electrical plug. You want to start by lifting the darker gray tab that I'm pointing to right there. Pull up on that and pull back. You don't want to touch the lighter gray tab because that'll loosen and, and remove the wires. Then you'll be in a, a world of, of trouble. So the part number, uh, if you're buying from GM, is going to be 12608814. It actually covers about 750 different vehicles, starting with the 1998 Pontiac Le Mans. If you still have one of those sitting around, good for you. Uh, the 98 Corvette Indy Pace Car. I'd imagine there's still several of those in very good condition around. I just saw one the other day. And right up to the 2021 Camaro. So basically, if you have a GM vehicle, this is probably the, the right part number. If you have a 2005 Sierra Bevin, it's definitely the, the right part number. So we're going to use our three-quarter inch deep well socket. A lot of times when there's not a lot of room, I'll put the socket on first and then put the wrench on. In this case, that actually didn't work out for me. So I ended up taking that all back out and putting the socket and the wrench together like a normal person and then going about it like that, which works just fine. And once it's loose enough with the wrench, you can go ahead and remove the wrench and just use the, the socket to kind of back it off the rest of the way. Or even your hands if you have enough room to get in there. Warning, the red splotches you see all over the place are from me trying to put my hand in there. It's not grease. It was a frustrating day. Grab our new one, and the new one goes in the same way. Uh, interestingly enough, there is no torque spec on here. So you just want to make sure it's, it's good and seated. If you're buying it from GM, there will be thread locker on there, so you don't need to worry about that. If not, the book states to put uh, Teflon tape, believe it or not. I'm not sure if that's good advice or not. So I just buy the part from GM. I'm going to always start threading in with your hands. You definitely don't want to use power tools. And even just a regular wrench at this point, there's going to be too much leverage. You won't know if you're skipping a thread and destroying the, the threads. Good luck getting a tap and die set in there without pulling the engine. So now that's on there satisfactorily. Go ahead and put my socket and wrench back in there. Wiggling in. And you see I'm coming from in behind the alternator battery connector. That was the, the best route that I found. If you know a better one, leave that down in the comments. I'm sure I'll be doing this again in another five years or so. And that's the neat thing about this one. It's it's pretty easy and you don't have to do it all that often. And it does leave you with a neat feeling of satisfaction when it's all over with. And you're going to be cranking for a little while because there's not a lot of room to actually engage the ratchet. So a couple teeth per time. Click, 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 click. And once you feel that it's on there good and tight, you go ahead and get your connector and listen for that satisfying click. Here we go. You heard it. Now all we have to do is put the tools away, put the coolant back in, set the cooling system back the way it should be, and go rip some donuts. If you have any questions, concerns, or jokes, leave those down in the comments for me. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next video. Brought to you by Kelm.net.